Welcome back, Closure Cones walkthrough. Oh my my, look at this, we're on number eight. Higher order functions. Gosh, I'm excited already. Let's open up this puppy. So another meditations function. Once again, we're gonna paste it into light table and remove the actual call to meditations. Oh, this one's gonna be fun, isn't it? All right, let's get started. The map function relates a sequence to another. Okay, so the map function. The map function is a higher ordered function. Hmm, and what was a higher order function? A higher order function is simply a function that takes a function as a parameter. Hmm, so here we see an example. Map is being called with a function as a parameter plus a list or a vector, I should say. So it relates a sequence to another. Hmm. So this function is doing what? It's a function of one parameter and it returns back four times that parameter. I think what we're gonna see is the map function is going to take this sequence and return uh, the result of applying this function to each of the elements in that sequence. So the number one is going to result in what when when this function when it's used uh, when it's passed as a parameter to this function. So we'll get four times one is uh, four, and the two is then passed through the function, and that will return two times four is eight, and the three is passed to the function. Three times four is 12. Uh-oh, this did not pass. What went wrong? Four times one is not one. Okay, there we go. Now we're cooking, now we're cooking. So the map function tr basically transformed the given collection by applying the given function to each of the elements uh, in, that, in that sequence. Cool, that, that could be a very handy function. Could be used a lot. Um, you may create that mapping. So here we're gonna define the function. So it looks like we've got this sequence as the result, one, four, nine, 16, 25. It looks like a squaring is kind of going on here. So we got one, two, three, four, five. If we square each one of those numbers, uh, so how do we express that? X times X? Yeah, sure enough. So you can map this sequence to another. Okay, or use the names of existing functions. So we don't have to just pass uh, an anonymous function. We can, we can pass the, uh, a named function. So in this case, the function is taking one parameter. The, the function nil is taking one parameter and, and it's returning true if the given value is in fact nil. So, what, what are we gonna get here? We're gonna get a vector full of um, Booleans, right? That's the result of calling nil. So when A is passed to nil, it should be false. B passed to nil should return false. Nil passed to nil is true. C and D are both false. Bingo, okay. A filter can be strong. Hmm, oh, filter. Filter is a higher ordered function. So filter, and you give it some sequence and a function, I guess it's a predicate function that returns true or false, whether or not the item should be uh, included in the list. Okay, so this is a function that for any X, it returns false. It doesn't even look at the X, it just returns false, meaning you're out of the list, you're out of the collection. So I think it's empty, right? <laughs> so we, f we filter anything uh, if we're filtering out all the items, it's gonna give us an empty collection. Okay, or very weak, a very weak filter. That's a filter that's not filtering out anything. And sure enough, this function would qualify. For any X, it returns true. Keep it, keep it in the list. No matter what it is, keep it in the list. So that's gonna simply return back the exact same list, the list with all the same elements in it. Okay, or something in between. Something between a strong and weak filter is a filter that takes out some elements and leaves other elements. Okay, what are we, what are we doing here? We've got, the result is gonna be 10, 20, 30, 
but we've got this big long list with 10, 20, 30, and a lot more. So it looks like we're only keeping the items in the list if the number is, what, less than 40? Maybe we can just do that. If X is less than 40, keep it in the list. Okay, it looks like we got that one correct. Ooh, maps and filters may be combined. So look what we've got here. Map with a function, calling, uh, calling that with the result of calling filter. Okay, this is getting pretty long. Let's, uh, let's make it fit on the screen better. So map this function to this collection. What's this collection? This collection is the result of filtering out according to some function here um, with the input collection one two three four five six seven eight and we end we want to end up with 10 20 30 okay so looks like we might want to keep the one two three uh, from our filter and then our map function can be multiplying each of the numbers by 10 that would give us 10 20 30 so let's keep only the first three when we're doing our, our filter. So only keep the X's that are less than four. How about that? Only keep the X's that are less than four. So that should just give us one, two, and three. And then we need to multiply each of those elements by 10. And look at that, that will indeed give us 10, 20, 30. So we kind of tied together a filter and a map. Cool. Reducing can increase the result. Hmm. Reduce is a higher order function, and we're giving it a function here with two parameters, and then a collection. So it looks like it's going to reduce it, like it's going to take two elements, right? Two parameters. So one and two, it's going to be like multiplying A and B. So it'll do like one and two, and then the result of that with a three and then the result of that with a four. So it's going to call this function a bunch of times. And in this case, it's just multiplying A and B together. So that should give us one times two is two. And then run the function again with the two and the three, which is six. And then run the function again with the six and the four, which is 24. Cool. So reduce, reduce this collection uh, by using this function, this function of two elements to just take that, take that collection right down to one number, reduce it to a number. Um, you can start somewhere else. So in this case, we just started with, we didn't have anything we're starting with. We're just starting with the first two elements of the list, I guess, but we can instead start with something else. So we know we got 24 out of that collection, but if we wanted to end up with 2,400 from the same collection, we'd have to start with like 100 as our first parameter here. Yeah, sure enough, that works. So we can start with something else besides just the first couple elements. Um, numbers are not the only things one can reduce. Hmm. Okay, our result is longest. Sorry. Our result is longest and it comes from calling reduce uh, with this function with A and B and it either returns back a B or an A. It returns back one of those depending on what? Uh, the result of this condition. It returns B if this condition is true. It returns the second word if this condition is true. Uh, I guess it's trying to find the longest word from the list so we can measure the length of the word, like the length of A and the length of B. And if um, we would want to return back B if it's the longest. So if the length of B is greater than, um, is greater than the length of A, length of A, but wait, how do you even find the length of a list? I don't know. Is it like count maybe? Count of which? Hey, it looks like count is working. It can treat 
a uh, a string as a sequence of characters, I guess. Let's try that. Count of A is less than the count of B. Hey, I think we got it. So there you go. We use the reduce function in an interesting way to, f to reduce out the, uh, the longest word in this list. Now that's just one example. So I think this, these kind of higher order functions can be applied in many different ways. And this is just the briefest of introductions. And um, we'll see more along the way. So stay tuned. I'll see you in the next video.